Hello and good morning and happy hump day out there in Facebook land. How's everybody doing today? Yay! It's a beautiful Wednesday once again. And I'm Dr. Valerie Renee Shepard coming to you live from the Hartley Center for Mindfulness and Self-Mastery. And the whole idea around self-mastery as I teach it is to master you and your life so that you can exquisitely manage whatever your life brings your way. <laughs> it's kind of cool, too, because the empowerment inside the idea of managing whatever your life brings your way and being able to do that exquisitely, it's a gift. And it's a gift that only you can give yourself. So, um, these little hump day happy chats are just some little tips and tricks that you can use to help yourself, quote unquote, do self mastery in a way that serves you, in a way that allows you to raise your vibration, for you to change your perspective and see things from a little bit of a different angle that might actually make the difference in how your life goes. Yay. So today is number 232. Hump day happy chat number 232. Finding inspiration. Now, if you've been watching these with me, you know that there's a, there are a couple things about the hump day happy chat. And one of the things is that I tend to focus on either questions that someone brings to me or <laughs> dynamics that are happening in my life real time at the moment. So <laughs> finding inspiration is a topic that I was dealing with as I was prepping for this hump day happy chat. And I literally heard myself say, I got nothing. <laughs> Have you ever felt that way? And then boom, before I knew it, I was riding away, riding away. So this is the question for you. How often is it that you maybe, like you can't find that spark? It's, it, it's not there. Like you are doing everything in your power to look for it and you're looking carefully. <laughs> you're, you're being diligent and you're being perseverant and it ain't coming. It's just not there. And boy, oh boy, those can be difficult times. And they get more difficult when you've got a deadline, a deadline. When there is a date that's coming or a time that's coming, a moment that's coming, and it has to be done. And maybe that day, you just can't find your spark. If you're like me when that happens, there are probably some times when you even wake up without a spark. You feel tired at the very beginning of your day. That really bugs me when that happens. It's like, I just slept. I want to wake up with more energy, more get up and go. I've got plenty that I could do, but nothing that really lights me up. Nothing that really is the thing that makes me want to like, this is why I'm here. This is, this is it. And I'm not necessarily talking about you found your purpose, but even inside your purpose, there can be days where it's sort of like, I'd like to just do nothing. Hmm. I'd like to just do nothing. So I'm often told by people who ask me questions, they'll put some context in it and say, well, I, I don't really, I don't really know what I want to do with my life, with this year, with this week. I don't really know what it is that I'm supposed to do. I'm, I have a job. I have a livelihood. I have a family. I have things that I'm doing and I'm still not really sure. I don't know what I deeply want. So any variation on this theme of, I don't know, I, I don't know, I don't know what, 
any variation on this theme is okay. And that's your number one thing. That's the first thing, number one thing. So if you wanna know, what do I do when I lack inspiration? What do I do when I feel like there's nothing worth doing right now? And I just wanna put a little pause in here. If you are um, feeling clinically depressed, if you are having trouble finding your zest for life, if you're contemplating not being here, please ask for help. Like there are hotlines and places that you can go. This hump day happy chat is not going to be the be all and end all to sort, to help you sort out what's going on. So please call emergency services or whatever else you need if you're actually considering that because you feel this way it is an indication that you don't need to be here so the first thing i want to say about this feeling of like uh listlessness or lack of inspiration how do you find it maybe you don't need to find it is number one Maybe the pause of your inspiration, of your energized feeling, is in order for you to take a pause. <laughs> Maybe it's not about constantly going, going, going because you're inspired. Maybe rest. Maybe stepping back, maybe just taking a time out is what's called for. And so the number one thing to do is to make peace with what is. A lot of stress and anxiety and overwhelm in our lives can come from resisting what is from trying to make everything that is wrong and to change it so that you can get to something that is quote unquote right. Like even when just, just taking an exhale and saying, I do not feel like I want to do this today. I guarantee you that's not going to, all of a sudden flood your cells with inspiration. But making peace with what is and allowing it to be exactly as it is, even though you'd like it to be different, that can give you a very peaceful baseline. It's like hitting ground level, a very peaceful baseline within yourself. It doesn't change anything out there, but a peaceful baseline within yourself and from that baseline, you're better able to create the real possibilities of what's wanting to come through you, come to you, be as you in the current moment. So that's the number one thing. Don't beat yourself up. Don't tell yourself bad things because the inspirational spark is just not lit for you in that moment however many moments it is. And then from that place of, wow, okay, well, inspiration is not the deal today. Let's see what is. From that place, you can do one of my favorite tools, which is called the so what, now what. So what that I don't feel like it, now what is calling to me? What can happen? And sometimes if you pull the timeline in. So instead of thinking about the whole rest of the day or the next week, maybe if you just say, you know what, I'm going to take a shower. <laughs> I'm going to make breakfast. I'm going to get my workout in or some dance in or some movement in. And allow your lenses to shift from the long view looking way, way out into the future that you're not inspired to handle 
or even work toward and take the short view. The short view of right now, I'm going to do this. And you could even convert the energy of I'm going to do this into the energy of I'm inspired to do this. And so that's what I'm going to do. And so you can do baby steps of I feel called to take a shower. I feel called to get a meditation in. Okay, so you got that one. That's the second one. Allow, accept, receive that you're not feeling inspired and allow it to be exactly as it is. Then use the so what, now what? Okay, well, I'm going to go take a shower and do the next thing that is in your future in that moment. If you need some ideas for next things, I'll tell you a couple. So my favorite is gratitude. So in that moment of, I don't feel like I want to do anything. I always say when the going gets tough, get going into gratitude. So what can you be grateful for? I'm grateful that I woke up. I'm grateful that I've got this question because maybe when I answer it, really cool things are going to happen. What can you be grateful for that you didn't even want? Maybe the dynamics that you don't want are little breadcrumbs into the space of something that you do. That's the way it's always happened in my life. Always, without a doubt, the things that I'm like, what the? And then when I, especially in, when I can look in retrospect, retrospect and see how all the little yellow brick road path was being laid out for me, even in the midst of things I didn't want. So gratitude can... At least, it may not, wow, I'm so inspired now, but at least gratitude raises your vibration and puts you on a frequency that more closely aligns with the frequency of inspiration. So gratitude is powerful mojo. So going into it, even for the things you don't want, maybe sometimes especially for the things you don't want, can lift you up enough that you're on fertile ground from a frequency perspective for that inspiration to start poking at you. Another thing that's really, really good, we can see things really differently when we get out and play in nature. Go for a walk where there aren't any cars. Like, go where you can actually, when you don't move, You can just hear the rustling of the creepy crawly things and the flying things and, and, and preferably where you can look up and see the sky, not a, not a building and allow yourself to, to feel nature touching you, touching you. And, and if you really want to take it to the next level, see if you can have a conversation with a favorite tree or a flowering plant or a ladybug or a bumblebee. I like bees. See if you can have a conversation. Hello, bee. (laughs) Nature has gifts that go unseen, unappreciated, every minute and when you can flip that for yourself and be absorbing her everything that she has to offer there are gifts inside those moments and so those little bitty moments not only will they give you some time to uh, get some more things to be grateful for those little bitty moments can just connect you to the energy of the planet the energy of the universe, the all that is, is moving within that ecosphere. It's a beautiful playground and it can support you to up level. And I'm not saying again, not necessarily to jump five levels and go from completely uninspired to raring to go, 
but from completely uninspired to even getting to neutral. Like, wow, I wonder what wants to talk to me today. I wonder what is waiting for me today out here. I wonder what it is. So practice gratitude, connect with nature. Another one that I talk about a lot through whatever dynamic you're in is cultivating curiosity. Curiosity. There's so much to know, to experience, to understand, to make peace with. So in, in this kind of a question mark, where did my inspiration go? Curiosity could be about, well, what am I really feeling? What's the deepest level of what's going on inside me? What does it, what truth might it hold? Curiosity might mean, what do I think being inspired is? Maybe I am, but I'm not counting myself that way. Curiosity is, why do I need to be inspired right this moment? What could I do in this uninspired moment that is a part of walking myself into my inspiration? What limiting beliefs do I have about where inspiration comes from and how it feels when it arrives? What limiting beliefs do I have about myself in the absence of inspiration? Curiosity can be a really rich tool for creating possibilities in the midst of what looks like nada. So use your curiosity to maybe pull yourself in a certain direction Lean in a little bit. Hmm, how many spots does this ladybug have? Like lean in a little bit. Ask some questions. And the best questions in the energy of curiosity are the ones you don't know the answer to yet. The ones that you actually have to be with. Like learn to love the question on the way to the answer. I like getting answers. I, I mean, I'm gonna be completely honest. I want it done, I want it done now. I like answers. Um, when I was writing my book, writing the book wasn't so cool. Having a finished book, woohoo, I was grateful for that to happen. Dissertation, writing it, whoop. Having it done, hallelujah, amen. So stay in the curiosity as long as you can around the question. See how many layers of the question you can dance with and feel complete in the absence of a definitive answer. And then the last little tip around this one I'll say is stay in the present moment, present moment awareness. Present moment awareness is a juicy, delicious thing. When I find myself sitting in lack of inspiration, a lot of times, not all of them, but a lot of times when I tune in to what's, especially what's going on up here, when I tune in up here, there's a whole lot of blah, blah, blah. There's a whole lot of muckety muck, yuckety yuck, blah, blah, blah that's not really serving me. Some of it's past. I'm talking about stuff I didn't do yesterday. I should have done this. Or what about that? What woke up too late, blah, blah. It's like some of it's a little, mm, a little intense, a little um, lack and limitation laden, a little poking at myself, which I'm really committed to not doing anymore. A little bit of that. And then mm, 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 there's the, kind of, I want it now, that the lack and limitation that is about grasping, striving, struggling, wanting to have things different than they are. That's why my number one thing was accept it as it is. 
So when I, when I play in that space of what is that thought about, it's never about the present moment. It's usually about the past or the future. And so when I can bring myself, Valerie, come on back to the future. One of the, excuse me, come on back to the present. One of the things I love to do is like nature helps me be in the present, but also I will like touch wooden things. I will p- pound on my leg or, or uh, say my name a couple of times. When I'm driving, if I feel like I'm not present, I will call out license plates. I will say that's that tree on that corner. There are all kinds of things you can do because that tree on that corner, when I'm driving by it, it's only happening in this present moment. And so right now is when it's um, going to call me back from wherever I am to be in the present moment. I might say the alphabet. I might say the 23rd Psalm. I might quote, say a quote from Rumi. I might say, remind myself that time is happening inside me. I'm always on time. Wherever I am, time and I are like this. I might have a lot of little mnemonic things that I do. What are yours for you? What are the things that wake you up to yourself being completely gone? Like completely gone. If you're rooted in the present, excuse me, in the past, and you're totally focused on the future, you are not here. It's the same as being gone. Even though your physical body is in the third dimension on this day and counting at a particular time. You feeling me? Are you getting it? The last thing I want to say is one of the first things I said. Having a lack of inspiration is not a bad thing. There's nothing wrong here. You're not broken. Having a lack of inspiration just is an opening. And you get to discover what that opening is. It could be the opening for rest. It could be the opening for recalibration. It could be the opening for shaking things up. It could be the opening for taking a pause. A lack of inspiration can be a beautiful thing. Sometimes in these moments, I completely rethink. And sometimes in these moments, something brilliant comes in that I never knew was there waiting for me. Because sometimes in inspiration, we can be so dogmatic because we got the inspiration and we're going. We're raring to go. And here we go. So sometimes we think we're inspired, but in fact, we're living in the past. From yesterday's, yeah. And we're missing, completely missing out on today's. So there you go. Inspiration is a beautiful thing. It bubbles up from inside of us. And we can tap back in, even when it feels like we're all tapped out. Thank you so much for being here with me. I'm still closing the Hump Day Happy Chat with the Karanaya Metta Sutra, the prayer of loving kindness from the Buddha. It just tickles me so much that I haven't actually been inspired to change it and it goes like this may all beings be peaceful may all beings be safe may all beings be happy yummy may all beings awaken to the light of their true nature peace love joy and freedom are your true nature awaken to your true nature and may all beings be free That's it for the Hump Day Happy Chat today. I'm Dr. Valerie Renee Shepard coming to you live from the Hartley Center for Mindfulness and Self-Mastery right now, hanging out in the beautiful village of Puyver, France. (laughs) Salut. Bonne journée.